Ladies and gentlemen, it's your friend Mike Brady from Ocean Liner Designs. Now, abandoned ships can grab the imagination. The circumstances leading up to a whole ship being left behind are varied and fascinating. From simple accidents to intentional beachings, today we'll count down five more of the most fascinating abandoned ships from around the world. Number five, the Lady Elizabeth. Most ships, after they are abandoned, succumb very quickly to the waves. The harsh salt water and pounding waves can reduce a ship to a pile of nondescript rusted metal in just a few years. But some ships seem to defy the odds, and a perfect example of this is the incredible and unlikely wreck of the Lady Elizabeth, which sits today almost perfectly intact, frozen in time. Back in the late 1870s, shipping magnate John Wilson was operating a fleet of fast sailing ships designed to operate between Australia and Britain. There was a fortune to be made here back then, and ships would bring all sorts of goods back and forth, but it was an incredibly dangerous journey, and hundreds of vessels were lost. In 1878, Wilson's finest ship, the Lady Elizabeth, got caught in a storm off Western Australia while en route to China. The crew was rescued, but the ship was lost, and Wilson needed to replace it. He commissioned a fine substitute to be built just a year later, and gave it the same name. Lady Elizabeth, apparently, so called after his mother. The ship was very typical of its time, utilitarian, and designed to lug as much cargo as it could between Australia and Britain. The ship set off on its maiden voyage in 1879, and embarked on what would be a long and epic career. In 1884, the ship hit a hurricane so violent that it staved in the ship's stern plating and ripped off all her sails. In the early 1900s, the ship had been sold to a Norwegian owner when mysterious events took place on board. Crew members began to fall ill and disappear. Sick with malaria, two sailors had vanished. A search of the ship returned nothing, and she had to sail on. Theories abounded, but the captain thought, in the end, that his men had gone mad with fever and jumped overboard. A third man fell ill, and he was put under close watch to make sure that he was safe. In 1912, the ship was 33 respectable years old when she took another battering in a storm, and this time, it was more severe. Four crewmen were lost overboard, and the ship's deck equipment was ripped right off of its seatings. En route for repairs, the ship's hull tore and she nearly sank then and there, but patched up just in time, she made it to a shipyard, but it was decided, at last, that the venerable old lady of the sea was just too badly damaged to survive. In 1913, the ship was condemned to a sad life as a coal hulk, storage for fuel, a job which she performed for another 23 years. And finally, in 1936, the nearly 60-year-old sailing ship, by then a relic of a bygone era, broke free of its mooring lines and drifted ashore, gently coming to rest in the sand and sticking fast. Today, the Lady Elizabeth rests in Stanley Harbour in the Falkland Islands, protected from the worst of the South Atlantic's pounding surf. Because of her location in this haven, the ship is in an incredible state of preservation, considering that she's sat abandoned for the better part of 90 years. On most wrecks of this vintage, the masts usually collapse and the hull is quickly eaten through, but Lady Elizabeth's masts still stand tall over the ship's decks today, and her hull has very few holes. Even more incredibly, many of her original fittings are still in place, including railings, davits for launching the lifeboats, support cables for the masts and the ship's rudder. In the 1980s, a survey was conducted that found that if the ship could be refloated, which wasn't an impossibility since apparently at high tides the ship rocks in the winds and waves, she could be dry docked, patched and restored to seaworthy condition. But sadly, plans to recover and restore this remarkable ship have come to nothing owing to the fact that there is just no dry dock nearby that can accommodate her. The Lady Elizabeth is destined to slowly melt into the sea well over 140 years after her introduction. Number four, the Peter Iredale. The Peter Iredale was a four-masted bark, a popular kind of sailing ship that was built in Cumbria, England in 1890. The ship was quite modern, with steel hull plating on an iron frame. Before then, most sailing ships were basically all iron, but steel was the shipping material of the future because it was lighter and it had better properties. The ship had a decent career up until 1906 when she set out from Mexico, bound for Portland, Oregon. 
and two stowaways were found on board. But that would not be the most dramatic moment of the voyage, because early in the morning of October 26th, the ship was attempting to clear the shore when a strong wind blew in and the Peter Iredale was taken way off course. It slammed into the shore and stuck fast. Despite the high seas and strong winds, the ship's lifeboat was able to evacuate everybody safely ashore, and they all survived, including the two stowaways. Peter Iredale was not so lucky. At first, the ship seemed to be in fine condition, and it could be salvaged if towed off the shore by another ship, except that the weather didn't cooperate. The nasty conditions remained, and when they finally abated, the ship had leaned hard over onto one side and become totally embedded in the soft sand. It was all over, and the ship had to be abandoned. And the ship's captain toasted his ship for the last time, saying, May God bless you, and may your bones bleach in the sands. And the wreck has remained in situ for almost 120 years, and is still visible above the soft sand. In the Second World War, it even became part of coastal defences when barbed wire was put up and strung around the ship's wreck to create an impenetrable wall. Today you can still walk out to the wreck for a look around, and it rests in what is now a national park. The years have taken a hard toll on the ship, and most of its hull has rotted away, returned to the elements. The tough bow section remains pointing out of the sand with its strong frames jutting out, and the wreck deteriorated fairly quickly after the grounding, and until relatively recently, you could have still seen the ship's masts protruding out of the sand. Now this is thanks to the destructive forces of the waves rolling in, which take a heavy toll on ships stuck in place, unable to move. Sadly, it seems likely that soon there'll be nothing left of the Peter Iredale at all. Number 3. The Atlantis The SS Atlantis's wreck is a fascinating thing, because the Atlantis was made out of material that you would not expect any ship to be made out of. The Atlantis was made out of concrete. In World War I, there arose the need for an emergency fleet of ships in the USA to meet demand once the country had joined the war. And there were concerns that the US's domestic steel production could not keep up with demand, so to avoid shortages, some alternatives were pursued. One designer floated the idea of a wooden steamer, and hundreds of these were made. But another material that could be used was concrete. In a process called ferro-cement, a steel or iron mesh is used for reinforcement, and light concrete is poured over the top. This was very impressive for a ship of Atlantis' size. She was 260 feet, or 79 meters long, and about 2,300 tons. There were some who doubted the ship's design could work, but sure enough, Atlantis was completed, although too late to see any use as a cargo ship in the First World War. Concrete ships were not built to last for years of service. They were a quick and cheap alternative. Steel ships can sail for decades, but Atlantis was meant to last only a short while. She did a few voyages repatriating US troops, but then that was it. She was sold off to a salvager who'd planned to use it as a part of a dock for ferries, but before the plan could be properly put into effect, the ship broke its moorings and ran aground. The ship couldn't be salvaged, and then its back broke, and that was the end for the Atlantis. And today, the wreck is still sitting there in three pieces above the water's surface. Its breakup has given us great insight into the way the thing was built, though. You can see inside at its structures and members like a perfect cross-section. It's a fascinating look at technology and engineering from 1918, and how concrete ships of that scale could even work in the first place. You can even canoe out to the wreck, but it's advisable not to get too close to it, because the crumbling ferro-cement and steel reinforcement is a serious hazard. Number 2. The Airfield Homebush Bay is a fairly unremarkable stretch of water near Sydney, Australia, except for one fact. Up to the 1960s, the area was used as a shipbreakers where old vessels were broken up for scrap. And today, the hulls of four ships can be seen above the murky waters, mostly overgrown by shrubs and bushes. One of these is the steam tug Heroic, built in 1909, and a veteran of World Wars I and II, who once manoeuvred the mighty Queen Mary when the liner visited as a troop ship. Today, Heroic is in a sad state, partially rolled onto its side and with much of its structure missing. It even has a few impressive trees growing out of it. Sadly, Heroic is beyond salvaging and destined to corrode into the mangroves. But Heroic's foliage is nothing compared to her neighbour. Parked nearby is the hulk of the coal carrier Airfield, which has grown a full forest out of its hull. The Airfield had started out life as the coastal steamer Coromel, built in 1911 in Scotland, she sailed for Australia and ferried coal before serving in the Second World War as a transport. After an impressive 60-year-long career, the ship was retired 
and do for scrapping at Homebush Bay, which is where she rests today. There are a few ships dotted around actually, still with their hulls intact and partially sunk, but why weren't they scrapped? These ships should have been destroyed a long time ago when they were retired in the 1960s. Well, something happened while Heroic, Airfield and the others were floating in Homebush Bay awaiting their fate. The price of scrap metal had plummeted. Businesses went under, and the ships were left while the situation was resolved, but a solution never came. Days turned to months, and then years, and the ships, left abandoned, began to corrode and sink. Today, they're locked in place, and have become a popular tourist attraction. You can take a kayak and paddle around their final resting place, only a short drive from Sydney City. Number 1. The YOG-42 This vessel is interesting because unlike some of the others on this list, it was beached on purpose. Built in 1943, the YOG-42 was a barge without its own propulsion system. It was designed to be towed by a tug and carried tons and tons of gasoline. These barges were designed to be a quick and cheap way of ferrying heavy cargo around, and like the Atlantis from earlier on, the YOG-42's hull was made from a kind of reinforced concrete. In World War II, the barge was being towed by a tug, the USS Navajo, when the tug was hit by a torpedo. It had been trailed by the Japanese sub I-39, and the tiny boat didn't stand a chance. She sank in two minutes, taking 17 of her crew with her. The YOG-42 stayed afloat, however, and it was recovered shortly after. At the end of the war, the US Navy no longer had a need for the thousands of barges which had been pumped out to help the war effort, and they had to get creative. Their attention turned to the Hawaiian island of Lanai. For decades, there was a tradition of abandoning used ships there. In the 19th century, steamship owners would simply let their old ships go near to shore and then allow them to ground, abandoning them to the elements. Today, the beach on the north side of Lanai is called Shipwreck Beach for the dozen or so wrecks which dot its shores, and one of those is the YOG-42. The barge was towed and apparently intentionally beached at Lanai, coming to rest on a particularly dangerous set of rocks. The stretch of water is extremely dangerous and has wrecked ships over the years. Since 1950, the YOG-42 has acted as a warning for any ship sailing past to stay well clear. The barge's ferro-cement hull has held up extremely well to the elements over the years. The vessel still stands tall and proud out of the water. Looking up close, you can see the individual bits of reinforcing steel buried under layers of concrete. You can get out to it by boat, but only when the conditions are just right. This beach is extremely dangerous and almost always windy and wavy. The YOG-42 will remain for quite some time, maybe even longer than a normal still-hulled ship because of the heavy-duty nature of its concrete hull. It's an interesting relic of the Second World War and it tells a tale of a forgotten part of the conflict, when concrete ships and craft were hurriedly churned out by the thousands to support the Allied war effort. Ladies and gentlemen, it's your friend Mike Brady from Oceanliner Designs. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a comment below. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel because we get new videos out weekly. If you want to support my work and get really cool perks like behind the scenes and early access, please visit my Patreon in the link in the description below or sign up as a YouTube member. Come and join the crew. And as always, stay safe, stay happy, and I'll see you again next time.